This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Drive out of the car! With your host, Mark Martinez. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. And the English professor. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And good weekend, good evening, good afternoon, good whatever. It's a stupid entrance, Chad, but I already have beers in me. It's morning. It it uh, technically yes it is still morning, yep, yep. but we don't know when they're gonna listen to this horse shit show. Well, yeah, wherever they steal it from, download it, pirate it, whatever. Pirate it. Yeah, if we're going pirating, I, nonetheless, like I said, I've already started drinking. Uh, I'm on probably number two of the Peter Straub Winter Bash beers. It's been that kind of day, so it's been that kind of weekend with the sun, so. And, and renegotiating John's contract. He's a he bit... got a 45-minute show right off the bat. What well, the he's, hell? he's not first. We put him in the middle. We, we that's the, You know that's the way that we cover IWC events. Yeah. I thought that, hey, you know, I didn't get to go to the IWC event. You'll hear all the reasons why once we get into it. Chad knows the backstory already. But uh, you'll find out why I didn't go... What pissed me off, this, that, and the other. And the English professor tells us, hold for hold, what happened. Uh, I can, I, it's, uh, that's good. It's IWC. Right. We so, just got to make sure he, he knows that this isn't a every weekly thing. Yeah, he definitely doesn't have homework or pontification. He, that, he only covers IWC and I shut him off. Ah. Once he starts talking about anything else. Did you just cut him off I on the just mic and just, just let him keep talking? Oh, he talked for another 15 minutes, and we left for church. Oh. Came back, and he finally was still jamboring. Oh, okay. I thought maybe that's when you had to make that trip to St. Mary's because he was still talking. No, I. as much as I, this episode is going to be weird for people listening and don't know the whole story, but it, as much as I'm royally pissed off at my son right now, I feel the need to still feed him. So we had to feed him before... Bread and water. Well, I know, but you know what came out this week, right? I'm a fat kid. The Shamrock Shakes have come out, oh. so I need to get a minimum of three of those a week in me, or I turn into a leprechaun. So that's why I, I can understand that. Yeah. yeah. So we he begged and I I caved because he said Shamrock Shake, and I said okay, let's let's go do the Shamrock Shake. I said then you're gonna go right back to your cave and get your homework done. That'll work. All right, so let's uh, let's dive in on wrestling now, and then we'll save some of the stuff for after IWC to talk about what's going on. And we'll release right now. John has cried that he wanted to be part of the project too. That we were talking about last week as we ended the show, which is only right. God, for God, bless him. Let him get on this because we started doing it, and it was painful. It was. It was. More difficult than I thought. Not not difficult, more tedious. Painful. Than I uh, thought, but yeah, it's a good project. Before we get into the wrestling, I gotta say something here. There is a huge anniversary being celebrated this weekend that anybody who is a sports fan should know about. What is it, Chad? 40 years ago, the Miracle on Ice, Yep. the American hockey team... Defeating the Russians 40 years ago. And we people often think that's that was for the goal. Yeah, and it wasn't. It they wasn't. Went, uh, if I'm remembering right, they beat the Russians, and then they had to go against Lithuania yeah, I think, for I the think. gold, which they kind of handily, handily them. beat them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, also, if you haven't seen the movie, well, you're a communist. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, oh my God. you you got to get the movie. It's it's a good movie, very well put together. Oh, um, yeah, it really is. Really gets the emotions, um, interviews with some of the the real players and everything. Great movie. Probably one of the, I'd say one of the 
top five sports movies of all time. And then after you watch that, watch Slapshot. Yeah. That's great as well. Yeah, then... then it's a different just, twist on it. it. Takes you from one <laughs> way to another on that one. So, we both watched TakeOver. Since TakeOver was last Sunday night, we both watched TakeOver. Let's start there. Uh, run down the rest of the horse shit in a bag, WWE, and then the two that we like. Right. Because uh, well, the one we will talk a lot about, for sure. Um... Takeover started with uh, Lee and Dijak. It's a two big man match. We've seen it before. I was okay. I wasn't really all in on this match. I, I'm I'm impressed. Those guys they step it up. They they step it up every single time. And we're we're I think somebody says a typical big guy match. Not faulting what you said, but you know I think of Big Show and Mark Henry or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, all right. These guys. These guys are just, they're so much more athletic. When Dijek did that freaking dive where uh, Lee was sitting on the chair between the announcer's table and he jumped from the ring up to the top rope, perfectly balanced, and did a flip all the way over to Lee. That was nuts. Yeah, th- I didn't mean big man match like the big show and Mark Henry and that. It, it just, at first it started off, you know, Bumping, bumping, yeah. bumping, and then it gets into their athleticism. Um, we've seen this. I'm not saying, and I'm not downplaying this match either, that we've seen it. It's, I don't, I, I think it would have been better to start with the next match and let Dijak and Lee go second, but that's just me. That, um, Lee wins, as we know. Yeah, hell, hell of a match is, you know, good, brutal, stiff match. This next match, talking about brutality, Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox. I was great with the match. I loved every part of the match. It, it did what it needs to do for this rivalry. I hated the ending. Yeah. The and ending. I hated the endings of several matches on this takeover. Yeah, the, the ending was bad. It kind of took away from the match, but it was, it was to protect both, both of them. Because they're hot. Um, and the the match itself, this is what a PG-rated match it should be. They they had the moves, but it wasn't ridiculous. Right. And, you know, there wasn't constant spots where they were, you know, sitting there ordering a pizza, waiting for the person to do stuff and that. Uh, great match. Great match. Great match. Uh, Raquel comes out, tosses Knox through the table... Dakota kind of looks around like she didn't know for a minute and gets the win. Uh, that's the part I didn't like. Uh, next up is Finn against Johnny Wrestling. I wasn't invested in this one at all. Yeah, just, I mean, both of the characters are good, but it's a, it, it's the same old thing with uh, Johnny Wrestling, you know, getting screwed over by somebody, getting the hell beat out of them you know, turning around and having a great match and ended up losing for, you know, one no reason, reason or another. another. Finn Balor, if you've ever seen anything of his, that, I mean, this was a match. This There was nothing surprising with this match. The only thing that I kind of got caught off guard with it was the amount of time they gave the match. Oh, yeah. It was a long, I mean, by NXT standards... It was a long match. It was almost 30 minutes. That's long and for them. for a two-hour or three-hour pay-per-view, well, it's but 10% again, of your show. again, this is NXT. I'd rather see stuff like that than oh, five-minute I mean, matches. We're not saying this was a bad pay-per-view oh, no, whatsoever. No, no. It's just, yeah. Uh, next match, guys, we said this last week. We blatantly said this. Bel Air against Ripley. Charlotte's going to come out. Yeah. Either cost the match, do some screwing over... And, anybody, and it happened. Yeah, anybody who thought Belair, there was some kind of chance of her winning this match, you, you were kidding yourself. And I see it a lot online. Oh, they could have Belair win, and and then Ripley beat her on a rematch. No, they're set. this has been set up with Charlotte to do this because Charlotte and Ric Flair have been bitching and moaning about her position. She hates tag team matches. Um, yeah, she hates tag team you know, the Becky thing's done with her, the Bailey thing going a different direction. 
this was uh, this was to me the only match that made sense for Charlotte on this card. Yeah, it it does. Or upcoming card, I should say. For WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. Undisputed Era against the Bro Dorks. Um, I told you. I, I blatantly told you that this is going to happen. And I'm shocked how the next match ended because I thought it was going to be an all or nothing thing. I, I really think, guys, if you know the Undisputed Era lost their titles, uh, you're going to see the Undisputed Era on... I want to talk to you about something. On the main card here in the near future, all of them. Yeah. I All of them, I, I wouldn't be surprised within another show here in the r- near future that uh, Adam Cole loses the title. Somehow. Not the Champa, not the Gargano. I, I, I believe it's going to be Velveteen Dream. Just throwing that out there. That's- yeah, I could. I kind of see them putting it, putting it towards him. He's got the fan response, although NXT air. I mean, they just everybody loves them. I agree. Oh, the, fan, the fans absolutely love them, and everything. Uh, unfortunately, I think you're right. They're going to be going to the main roster, and that's where I want to stop. Uh, again, we'll we'll probably go really long on this episode. Honestly, we probably will because we say Raw and SmackDown are the main roster. Okay. Well, NXT has a TV deal now. NXT is getting better ratings than the other two. Yeah. Oh. So, isn't aren't they just shifting anymore? I don't think there's a call up when you for uh, from NXT to the Raw or SmackDown. We say it because we know Raw or SmackDown as you know Raw is a flagship show. SmackDown came in a couple years later, so they've been around. They got the longevity. Da 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 da. Is it really a call-up anymore, or is it just a shuffle? Because are you going to say that Charlotte Flair went back down to NXT when, come on, well, she, they, as much as we hate her, she's got star power. Yeah, she's. I mean, she's got the name. She's got, you know, they're, they're going to be good matches. Um, I, I guess you're, you know, you're kind of right. They're not really calling them up, but it's kind of like Vince's picking... It's a trade. No, it's not even a trade. It's yeah, a free agent it's, signing or something. picking the guys, but I just don't want them... Who, who's going to carry it? They just don't have a lot of people developed right there. they got a lot of talent, but not a lot of people developed. You see, Right. You see all this happen. WrestleMania comes. You see a lot of... We're going to still call them call-ups on here because we're just... It's in our... It's embedded and in because, our head. And we got to call it call-ups because... You know, Vince put out that memo a couple weeks ago that the the lower card talent cannot, isn't allowed tweeting. isn't allowed isn't allowed calling out the higher card talent. But then you know, Mister Dishonorable Discharge Randy Orton calls out um, shit now nah, Riddle Riddle on the thing. So I'm like, oh, does it is, is that off now? Yeah. Or is it just no, your it, money makers, or what's the deal? The or is it just peckerhead Brock? It's the lower, and, and and we don't mean this by talent or anything. It's the lower card people he doesn't want talking about the bigger. As much as people love Matt Riddle, uh, the, Eng, the English professor being one of them. Well, he's a Charlotte fan too, so you know. He, it's just he's not. Do you think he could carry like Riddle? Is he going to carry a Raw? No. Or is he going to carry a, a, a horrible SmackDown show? No. I think Riddle at best is a tag team a mid champion. Card, a mid card champion, considering the U.S. title, Intercontinental titles have pretty much been, you know, worthless. Yeah, Dean, or made worthless. Um, tag team wise, it could be, but the tag team scene isn't real impressive either. I, I don't know. Uh, so Champa against Cole. Again, a great match. But the ending again, we're going to get Champa Gargano for... The, About the 500th time. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how many more times. It's not Flair Steamboat. I It's not that. Flair Steamboat, as we'll talk about uh, several times this week about it, hint on the spotlight coming up on Wednesday... Um, it's not Flair Steamboat. They're they're not there. Yeah, it's. I mean, Flair Steamboat was technical. It was grace. It was you know telling a story. 
these guys they're just, just beat the hell beat, out of each they other. They just beat the shit out. And I can't say that it's not fun to watch. No, I'm not you saying that. You know, it was that. like watching, uh, who was it? Uh, Alistair, not Al- Yeah, Alistair Black and Trump, and two big guys just beating the shit out of each other. Oh, it's fun to watch at times, but it kind of gets old. Johnny Gargano, in the undercard role, the baby face fighting back, it, it's getting old. It's like Tommy Dreamer and ECW never having the title, and then when he finally does win the title, he loses it five minutes later, I think, to the Sandman or something like that. He was a better, he had more of the it factor than Gargano does. Yeah, yeah. So, all in all, a good takeover. A good takeover. Very bland because you kind of knew what was coming. Yeah. The, the real surprise was probably Adam Cole seeing Gargano come out and, and cause champ of the match again. That was, that caught me off guard. Otherwise, eh, everything else we could have pinpointed. Yeah. yeah. I'd say that's fair. Raw sucked. SmackDown sucked. No, um, I, I, I don't have anything. Matt Hardy gets killed. By Randy Orton. By Randy Orton. Rowan against Black. This is one that I know it's an undercard match, this, that, and the other. You're building both of them up. Rowan is ripping through people left and right. Aleister Black hasn't lost on Raw since he's been on Raw. Ja, 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 ja. Aleister Black makes waste of Rowan in minutes. I don't care about Rowan. Not that I cared about him, but I don't care about Rowan anymore. I don't give a shit what's in the cage. Why would you put these two against each other? Whoever yeah. takes a loss takes a hurting. Yeah, it didn't It didn't make a lot of sense from the storytelling, but I guess I'm seeing them keeping Black going more. Oh, yeah. Because after wrestling, or after WrestleMania... And so help me God, if Drew doesn't beat Brock Lesnar for the title, I'm done. I'm putting, I'm spearing the TV. Um, Thank God you're not watching it here then. um, I think that Aleister Black and Drew McIntyre would be a really good match for. I'm in for that. I I think that's where they're going with this. I think that's going to be his first big. His first opponent big feud, yeah, and I'm all right with that. My, my big thing was, uh, what, what the hell, why? And I'm not an advocate for Rowan. I just, I knew what was going on, and now you just buried him. Yeah. Uh, Flair is ready for Ripley. Um, a triple threat match: Mojo, r Truth, and Moss. I, I'm just going through the card because it's on here. We have a lot of bullshit, and this was the the show that Chad was supposed to time this week i didn't even make it an hour into the show and i was like i can't do this shit all in one thing i was so like okay crap crap segment crap segment but i did one thing i did go back through um well i guess we're we'll wait for smackdown i didn't do it on raw okay uh i got nothing else aj came back there you go yeah Uh. in the sermon as much as I'm not against the whole, I'm not, uh, everybody knows uh, um, I'm religious and, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm not against the Seth Rollins thing for that. I'm against the Seth Rollins thing because the only time he's good is when he's in a group. That's my point, that he's getting good again. I'm all for this sermon it thing. It seems his confidence in every aspect is up right. more when he's in a group, except for... The Brock Lesnar, um, you know, trilogy of matches. That it just seems like he is more confident when he's in a group, and those two guys are not ones that he needs to be in a group with no. the AOP. No, no, it's just I don't know. In the Raiders and everything, uh... I, they're copying the storyline. Who is the creepy guy that uh, was in TNA with the? Uh, Long hair and like he I was knew, a devil. Uh, I know James. Yeah, James he's got the teardrop tattoo. Yeah, and that's he what they're kind of yeah. going with this, and yeah. that was really, that was really good. That dude was freaking creepy. Yeah, I know exactly. And that's what uh, they're kind of going with this, and uh, I like Seth 
better as a bad guy myself. I'm all right with him, a bad guy. And it's just, it's the same shit. It's yeah. the same. Yeah, I don't know. SmackDown, let me tell you this. Friday night, we we went out to eat with the the family. Was it Friday night? No. Friday, where the hell was it Friday night? A basketball game. Basketball so I, game. So I missed the I missed the first half an hour. Um, I asked the English professor, "Hey, what did I miss?" He sent me back a middle finger. So it means nothing. Garbage. Nothing. That's yeah. it. Uh, I caught on when your boy Otis was just Tucker was talking to Mandy and Sonia, and uh, they make a cuter cup or da 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 da. So garbage. Lacey's talking about talking about bullying. Garbage. This match. Good message. Oh Good yeah, message yeah, great message, time. but it was just garbage time. Um, Shinsuke and Cesaro versus Elias and Braun in a beat your metal drum match. What? Just call it an extreme rules match and just have shit out there. I don't need a metal sympathy death match or whatever they call it. And it was stupid. This is only the second one ever. Do you see why it's only the second one ever? The the mm-hmm. bottom line was SmackDown was in a two hour show. There was 32 minutes of wrestling, three matches, take 30 minutes out for commercials. So half of the show was crap. I honestly, talking to both John and Chad briefly yesterday, I, and they both didn't really dive into SmackDown. They all had something going on, this, that, or the other thing. I made the point, and... We'll see if Chad backs me up. The only thing I remember without my notes is Naomi won against Carmella and is the number one contender for Bailey's title. But the match was absolutely horrible. There was so much room in between punches, kicks, anything. I don't know who... I, I really don't know who is at fault. Who... I... <laughs> The bookers, A, or who's at fault. No, I meant the match. Because those two, when they're paired with somebody good, can have a, good, a match. good match. When they're paired with themselves like that, they don't have... There's there's not a ringleader. Both of them have a lot to be desired on, on the skill set. It, it was like a... Carmella and oh, who the hell did she have the match with um, Bailey, last week? Bailey. Her Bailey. Bailey ripped it up. Great match. Great match. But she was with Bailey. Yeah. This match, not so much. Eh, eh, eh. And I'm I'm not a fan of Naomi. I never have been. Um, I think she's a kind of a sloppy performer, a dangerous performer. Um, that's just me. So, NWA really didn't have a show this week. They had what's called the Circle Squared, as we're just, we're, that's it. WWE is done. No more. Yeah. Done? Good? Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. SmackDown sucks. Yeah. Sucks. Uh, the NWA, the Squared Circle, the Circle Squared, um, I love the concept of it, you know, getting new people in, letting us vote to see who stays. Guys, uh, it's going to get ready. I'm going to push a button on chat it's going to set up something for the crockett cup and the crockett cup tickets still have not been they're on announced sale. but we don't know where they're on sale from yet nope no nope. don't know what ticket avenue brown paper ticket master e-tickets we don't know, know. No, they, they, they might be on ebay who the hell knows that pisses us off <laughs> um i love the concept of this idea but it took way too long just have the match have a vote i don't i after seeing the Hawks, we saw them at WrestleCade. And we'll bring up WrestleCade here in a minute. Uh, we saw them at WrestleCade. And the other guys, the uh, Nikita, yeah, Nikita Koloff's team, the best secret of Jeff Lewis, Neal, and Tyson Dean, I like them better. Yeah. Uh, one, we don't, we don't like the Hawks, first of all, for one yeah, reason. Yeah. And if you don't know, if you don't recognize that name, that's the idiot team father son team where the son got up on the balcony upper balcony in the mall and jumped off on the two opponents and his father his father backing the two opponents up for shock value again doesn't make any damn sense what are they doing 
oh, where's your son at? We're just going to beat you up while he, you know, goes, gets an ice cream cone and gets on the second level of the mall. Right. It it doesn't make sense. And, it, uh, and we talked to somebody later on this week that completely agrees with us. Yeah. So we'll, we'll ruin, uh, we won't ruin, we'll toss out the teaser at the end of the show who our spotlight's with, and he completely agreed with us. It, yeah. There was no point to that. My disappointment is, is these guys are going to probably be at the Crockett Cup. And do a spot like that. And I I hope they don't. Um, with this with the way this arena is set up and I've looked, I don't see him being able to do something like that. And I don't see Billy Corgan letting them do. When he says to us, there will never be a scaffold match as long as I own NWA, I don't see him letting this. But I see these guys. And that's guys, what Cornette told me to shut up. I see these guys having a match and, and beating somebody. And it's just. I don't mean to be rude, but more des- there's more deserving people. I would rather see PCO and Brody King come back, win a match, than these guys win a match. Yeah, we we weren't fans really of them at WrestleCade when we saw them wrestle. We we weren't. Yeah. I, I you go back and listen to it. I, we we really WrestleCade was just a big cluster of a lot of people, and it, there were some good matches. But they we they, pinpointed them that we didn't like them. Yeah. Uh, let's touch on WrestleCade right now. Tickets came went on sale earlier this week. Wednesday. 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 Thursday. Wednesday. 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 Wednesday for sure. Yeah. Wednesday for sure. Uh, I him hot and not around enough that um, some family members. Uh, Said it's it's gonna be a Christmas present. Shut by, the hell up. By <laughs> by hem hot around four hours about bitching. If I don't get these tickets now, I'm not gonna get the ones that I want. And just cry. Probably yeah. He cried like a little bitch. I did. I did. But so, he got his tickets, so it was effective. It was effective. It works. Call me if you want to know how to do that. Um, so that's my Christmas present already. Which it's great. It's a great Christmas present. It it satisfies everybody's needs. Yeah. You got in just in time because the first day, 500 tickets out yes. the door Five without days. announcing anybody. Yeah, no, nothing announced. The only thing that you know about WrestleCade this year is here's vendors' information to sign up and how much it costs, and they put tickets on sale. Right, that's it. And and we know that there's going to be, you know, uh, uh, this event, you know, there's their standard event lineup. Right. That's, that's all that's known. Like the Q&A, there's, I, I'm not going to say it, there's some rumors of what it might be, but, you know, we're, holy, nine months away from it. Yeah. We, shit could change 17 times. So we're not going to say anything like that. But it's rumored that that's coming up, which, if it happens, that's amazing That on would us. be great, depending on who they bring in. Right. So, uh, WrestleCade, guys, if you want second level tickets now uh you better go because vip one is gone and the all-inclusive yeah you're every you're a god your weekend yeah your weekend thing you that that's gone the one underneath it um which is only includes uh one first row seat the rest are general admission and then your admission to the wrestle fest um those are gone the only way you can't get first row tickets. Not yet. Anyway. Your your you're, general admission or yeah, your general admission at best. And the, something new this year for a hundred dollars is the twenty autographs. Yeah. Of the thing of the people that you get, which isn't a bad which, deal. Which no, not a bad deal at all. But now you're paying individual prices for general admission tickets almost for I don't want to say for everything but that's kind of what the packages for everything you know are are for that are left in that so get on there guys uh tickets will go fast uh especially I thought February maybe beginning of March you're going to announce their number one person like it was Muda last year at this time I believe they announced it they didn't announce Muda until later it was only about two months before Ahead of WrestleCade that they put who Muda did, in there. Who did they grab that we... There was somebody right off the bat that were like, holy shit, we got to kind of get to this. And we kind of put it to the side, but... Uh, I was... Uh, Muda. Muda. Who Sheik. 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 And we didn't Sheik get Sheik. Was, Sheik. Well, yeah. And, well, 
my five-year-old got Sheik's autograph. Shut up. All right, let's move on to AEW. Uh, this show was amazing. Except I, for the first 20 minutes. See, from top to bottom, I, I, I like the show. I, I hate... I, I, the Battle Royal was too much for me. The... All right, let it me was get set into in, Okay, it was set in, We knew who the hell was going to win it. The right. young fucks. I mean, bucks. Yeah. Um, we knew they were going to win it. But to me, this battle royal was actually... I I it, liked it. It was... All right, it was good after the first five minutes. The first five minutes of it is what pissed me off. Everybody was in the ring. You were pumping this crowd up. In five minutes into your TV show, you have everybody laying on the ground for 15 seconds. Because one person dove into everybody and yeah, knocked, knocked everybody like over. 30 people down. Yeah, yeah that's, I'm like, yeah, no, not first! I just... Maybe five people. Okay, it was everybody. Maybe a big person. Maybe, a, right. But not a, well, let's just be thankful Marco's stunt wasn't in it. Uh... Later in the match, I think one thing was wasted, and I think it's hurting Pride and Powerful, Santana Ortiz, whatever we're going to call them. They did the sweet street, the street sweeper on Jackson. Yeah. That's their finisher. Yeah, he should have been out. He, they, they, right. Don't let him do that. We knew the Young Bucks were going to win, because who has the titles? Da, 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 da. It's, it's been set up. Why have him do the finisher, and then he saves himself? Again, their is, finisher has been destroyed several times. This has been the thing of AEW, especially with the tag team division. You know, uh, Santana and Ortiz, who's the other guys? The best friends. Yep. Um, using these, you know, amazing maneuvers and that, and then having guys kick out of them, and then they win with a small package. Yeah. Wrong. Not good booking. Not good booking. Next up, we had Britt come out on commentary as Shauna and uh, Statlander were having a match. Uh, I, I think <laughs> I think Britt was used wrong here. They didn't give her enough time to talk. She got some words in, but she didn't get enough in. I think this was used right because she was picking on Tony. She again. was picking on Tony the whole and time. You'd see, and they made, they made a, a, a slip up and they pan back to them and Britt had her arm around Tony and they were both laughing and smiling and it was like oh shit I gotta be mean and yeah. it was just funny because it, Tony Tony can take this stuff without cracking um, Britt cracked and I don't yeah it, it was just funny and I, oh my god she her hotness is increased by being a bitch I agree I agree Statlander wins in a match that was okay um We'll leave it at that. Nyla comes out for her interview. She's pissed the crowd's not cheering for her. She's the queen bee. Statlander comes back out. Big Swole comes back out. They banter and they kind of just don't let anything happen. They just push him to the side. Side. Yeah. Um, Big Swole's going to be a player in AEW. I, I really, I think so. And Statlander, I believe, is going to get the next shot at Nyla. Let's hope, though. Cobb versus Moxley. <laughs> My God. <laughs> this match was great. They, those two are so, so underrated, and they just beat the hell out of each other again. I don't. I, I know Moxley winning was the thing to do. I just, I, it could have been some bullshit decision. Right. To not hurt Cobb, but I think. I don't think he's hurt at all. Um, I think. They haven't signed officially signed Cobb yet, so it's kind of like, you know, they don't they don't want to they don't need to pander to him yet. Yeah, I mean he can come back and do whatever, but dude is a beast. Yeah. Oh my God, he reminds me of a more agile Rhino from ECW days, whereas Rhino was just just a, a an absolute beast. Beast. Um. Cobb just has, I think he's he's more flexible, uh, you know, better on the technical side. 
Moxley wins. Uh, here comes the inner circle. Da 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 da. He gets his ass beat, and you called it. You called it two, three weeks ago. Lights out. You hear the music. You see the skateboard. You hear the pop. You hear the pop. Heat. In a good way. Not yeah. that, you know, just the uh, just up and ready to go. And Darby is... We've already said he's a superstar, but Darby's a legit player now in AEW. Yeah, he's... As much as I hate Sammy Guevara, I'm, their match at the pay-per-view is one of the matches that I'm honestly looking forward to. Let's talk about Sammy for a minute because we forgot he's to say... such it. a dick. We forgot to say <laughs> this during the Battle Royal. He actually interfered during the Battle Royal and the super kick that he took and he bent oh. himself. I, It looked like he got his jaw smacked around to the back of his head. That was that was best beautiful. sell of the year so far. I don't care. This reminds me of years back when uh, Shawn Michaels wrestled. Uh, oh, the one guy that was with Kurt Angle, Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin and Benjamin propelled himself off the rope, flipped around, and Michaels super kicked him right in the face. This reminded me of that. It just looked. I was like, honestly, I thought he was hurt. Yeah, I, it looked bad. <laughs> I really thought he was hurt. Uh, so, again, Darby, Sammy G is going to be an amazing match. Next match up is the Lucha Brothers against Paige and Omega. Um, good tag team match. Really good. It, good. it was. But, again, we knew who was going to win this match. I, I almost wish this match would have been before the Battle Royal. Because then you could talk, and but you know, like now they're talking about who the Bucks gonna face, who the Bucks gonna face. Well, we've seen the the prelude to all of this of the Bucks and Omega being buddy buddy, but Hangman they don't want him drinking anymore. And Hangman says, "Go get bent. I'm gonna have a beer after your after a match, Chad. Don't you think he's allowed to have a couple beers? Yeah, yeah, three, it four, ten, like, whatever. It's like people bitching about uh, Storm and Eli Drake on." power the last time two weeks ago or whatever drinking on set out of the crockett cup he only had one beer give him a break right it doesn't matter if it was like a hundred gallon or ounces <laughs> yeah. of beer right give him a break uh whatever i mean i'm excited to see the bucks against omega and hangman i'm excited to see what happens after Bucks win the title, you're going to get Omega and Hangman fighting for a little bit. Yeah. Because I, I think, because this Wednesday, Pac against Omega in a first ever Iron Man match for AEW, something goes on there, Pac causes some interference during the main, during the pay-per-view, Hangman gets pissed off, and him and Omega go after, I, I, that's just where I'm going. I, I see it. Something happening this week where Paige comes down, uh, Miss Q, whether he distracts Omega, causes them the match, they're bitching back and forth, they get into the pay-per-view, and I see Omega turning on Paige. Oh, okay. Because there's more of a following to cowboy shit right. than there is Omega. Shit. Cowboy shit, come on, what oh, he God. says. Uh, right, I know, I know. And what they chant. And then we go, we have a cage match. It was just, it was a cage. No, my God. <laughs> First, got to go back. Before we hit the cage match, I got to say, kudos to the fan. That was awesome for you to give Paige a beer after. He was very parched. We don't know. You know, he could have. Yeah, I, he could have been suffering. He could have been suffering. The cage match. The cage match. This cage is great. It's not. It weighs six tons, so this is this is my beef. I, uh, it weighs six tons, so each side of the cage weighs a ton and a half. Uh, whatever. Well, well, let's. But with, we'll it, leave it at that. We we'll, brought we'll, we brought this up. We talked about that part offline, and I said something that I liked about this cage was the fact that where the corners were, where were where the aisles like if you were looking down at the cage that's where the aisle was so there was nobody sitting right there you weren't looking into a, a corner and not being able to see shit right everybody had a great view no matter where you were sitting 
my big thing was there was no cameraman in the cage. There was the turnbuckle cam. They shot through the cage, which that's what they did that's in the 80s. That's what gives it. That's Look what gives it. The war games, the first two war games match, you saw every single thing you needed to see in two two rings by shooting through the cage. Yep. That makes it in it that makes it wrestling for me. Cage match in the WWE is an entertainment match. This and good God, uh, we talk about blood a lot in this show. Um, once John and I get and talk about the IWC recap, Cody started it off this week with just dripping blood. This was a bloody mess this week. Yeah, he, you know, took another another good shot. I mean, he's a Rhodes. He is a Rhodes. Yeah, he I likes know. to bleed. He loves to bleed. Dusty liked, likes to bleed. You know, Dustin did after he got comfortable in the business more. The match was great. Um, Wardlow played played perfectly. Uh, this is my five year old sat and watched this. Was he, he upset? Go- that- oh, he was pissed when Wardlow lost. He was stomping and threw his tablet on the couch. I'm going to bed. But it's Wardlow didn't lose. In wins and losses, he's got an zero and one. Wardlow did not lose. Yeah, that for the first match. Um, you know, every everybody that I've seen talk about this online, holy cow, we didn't know he was this good. I told yeah. you so. IWC we fans told, you, told you, so. you so. Go look at his stuff. You can find, if you don't want to pay for the IWC thing network. It, because there's so on YouTube. There's so much on YouTube. He is the complete big guy. You want power? He's got power. You want brawling? He's got brawling. You want to go... He, he may not be a Ricky Steamboat or a Ric Flair scientific-wise, but dude can have a good match with anybody. And if you, if you don't He think, made Jackson Argos look good. Yeah, that's hard to do, too. That's, a, that's, like, that's almost on the level of making a man dime look good. <laughs> we'll get the IWC. There's a lot coming up. So. Um, yeah, but he did, Wardlow, Wardlow looked great. Yeah. He did. Uh, so AEW wins by about a hundred thousand this week in the, which I'm shocked it didn't hit a million. With what they threw on the table, it didn't hit a million this week. But they beat NXT by about a uh, hundred thousand. Yeah. Rounding. I'm not going to get into specific numbers, but about two, two things we didn't mention about the cage that we got to talk about here was the tease with Arn that turning on turning on Cody. Now was that. A tease, or was he letting MJF get a little bit closer so he could smack his head off the door? Hint, it's a tease. It's a tease. If you don't think Arn Anderson's going to turn on Cody Rhodes, turn in your wrestling man or woman card. Wow. Because you do not understand what's coming up. Anderson Rhodes history. I think it comes after Cody has the title. I think it comes beforehand because it's more more of a build up for Cody. I think it's gonna. I think they're they're not gonna put the have a title on Cody for a while yet. He he will not be the one to beat Jericho for the title. I do not believe that. And I'm gonna stir the pot and say I don't think it's gonna be Moxley either. I don't I don't think so either. As Jericho much as I would like to say Moxley, I think they're gonna have maybe a a two three match series. Where neither one of them are hurt um, out of it, but I don't think Moxley's gonna win it. Or if he does win it, then he's gonna get upset for the title Quick. quickly. Yeah, um, I, I think so. I because he's he's somebody better to climb after the title as well. Jericho, I I, I don't know. He he's your Ric Flair right now. Yeah. Uh, the other thing with a cage match was old. MJF climbing and Brandy smacking him with a chair a couple of times, and he comes like he's gonna punch her, and Arn comes from behind and throws him into the fans or whatever. Good spot for good spot good for spot Arn. for Arn. Good spot. You know what? Brandy being back with her husband is awesome. Yeah, they uh, the she doesn't need to be in the wrestling ring, you know, and try to be put over as a wrestler. That whole crap that she was doing before, it's not 
it's not her. It doesn't make use of her. Yeah. It makes her look like, and I'll, I'll say it, it makes her look like Stephanie McMahon being pushed down our throats because of who she is. Nice. All right, let's head over to Al Snow. We'll talk about, because this is going to be long. It's already long. I'm looking at the time. Um, Call or Noble, you guys know the whole shtick. When you go to check out uh, Can Crushers, capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers, you'll get an extra 10% off. We love the clothes. Generic pop for them today. Here's Al. We'll be back, or I'll be back, with the English professor to cover IWC, and Chad will join us in a bit. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is Remy LeVay of The Culmination, and you're listening to the Can Crushers podcast. And welcome back to the Can Crushers. I have the English professor right now who was live at IWC Ignition last night. Uh, we'll get into why I couldn't be there, but English professor, how are you doing today? I'm a little hoarse, uh, so please pardon my voice. Um, other than that, I'm great. These late nights, early mornings are a little tough, but hey, it was a fun night, so I'm going to have fun talking about it this morning. So you went, I had to stay back because the son got into some troubles and we've made it a major homework weekend. You know, as I said, we're always forthcoming what's going on. Uh, he's failing some classes. I don't appreciate it. And I'm going to put him to school my way. It's the right thing to do. I mean, you know, everybody goes through tough times, but he, he's too smart of a kid to be doing as poorly as he's doing. Yeah, you need to talk to him more. Um, so I got on the live stream, which is this is the first time I've actually watched a live stream live. You know, I've watched some of the video on demands and everything. So this was kind of a little bit of homework assignment for me as well. But I only got on after Bulk Nazi threw Xander in the locker room because we decided to go to dinner with my father. So you can have the first two matches right off the get. All right, we got there just as they were making the introductions for the pre-show, right around 6.40, 6.45. The pre-show match uh, was a tag team match with uh, Phil Archer and the Sexy Fireman against Team Big League, consisting of the Short Shot and Mandime. I thought the Short, Short Shot name was pretty cool because that's uh, a reference to Africa Bumbada. I don't know if you know who that is. No. Nope. He's the godfather of hip-hop, Mark. The uh, godfather of hip-hop. Oh, yeah. Now I know yeah, who he is. is. Yeah. Now you know who he is? Yeah, he's got a song called Planet Rock. Yeah. Planet Rock, it's the show shot. Anyway, that made me think of uh, that song. They were very cool. Man, Don's, Don's very cool. This was just a good tag team wrestling match. I love tag team action. Uh, and this told your very, very typical, yet still very fun tag team story with the bad guys beating up one of the good guys. And eventually, Sexy Fireman getting a hot tag. Uh, did a little clean cleanup work, went to do the booby face, I think, to the short shot. The dime piece got on the apron and started yelling at him. Uh, some of the fans were like, hit her, kiss her. Uh, but he gave her the booby face, grabbed her oh, by the face. That's and, a poor thing. Oh, yeah. She played it up well, but she was, she was repulsed, man. Maybe I'm she repulsed. Really was. Maybe it wasn't that. I don't know. I'm repulsed by that. <laughs> Um, in the end, uh, Team Big League wins, and you're going to see some wins tonight with very basic moves that may seem anticlimactic, but I ho hope IWC trains fans a little bit to accept a basic move winning a match. Um, and in the end, you had the short shot and the man dime. 
doing spinning forearms. So like one hit the sexy fireman in the back of the head. I think the short shot hit him in the face and Mandon hit him in the back of the head. And that was enough to knock him out and get the pin. I, I like that. I, I like that. Big League, Team Big League is uh, on the move right now. You're going to see a lot of things from them in 2020. And I know they played around on social media all week saying that there's a, a new member coming tonight. So I guess we'll have to wait and see later on down the line, huh? Yep, we find out a little bit later in the card. And the next match is the actual opening match of the card then, right? Yes, it is uh, Chest Flexor versus formerly known as Gory uh, Angelic. Chest Flexor comes out with um, Corey Futuristic and Ginger. <sighs> Give me a minute. Give me a minute. I will be the sushi to her ginger any day. Anyway. Good. Anyway. God, you, that took uh, you all week to think of that. Yes. Okay. Uh, very, very quick match. Angelic offered him a leaf. And I don't know if this was like a symbol. It's a feather. A piece. It's a golden uh, feather. Do you not under? Ah, oh, all right. Go ahead. I still am unclear. I'm still unclear. I'm sorry, but I'll get. I'll figure it out eventually. Uh, Chest flexor takes the leaf. He does some funny things with it. He puts it um, kind of on his scalp, um, like a headdress. Then he takes it off and puts it above his lip, uh, like under his nose, like a mustache. And then he tickles Angelic with it. Um, the fans were getting a kick out of it in the end. Um, and in the only move of the match, really Angelic gets him sort of like into a razor's edge position up over his head, spins him in midair and brings him down like into like a masked superstar honky tonk man type of neck breaker. One, two, three. That was it. I don't know if the match took 15 seconds. If you eliminate the tickling and the feather mustache, um, and he had to be carried back to the dressing room by Ginger. She uh, carried him like um, he was her new bride, and she was carrying him over the threshold. She's a strong lady. She's Yes, she is. She really is. Uh, a lot of extracurricular activities Ginger does with a uh, chest. So, yeah. This is where I came yeah, in now. I, I see Bulk just shoving Xander into a locker, and then he comes out because he's going to defend the titles against the Regulators, which is Chris LaRusso and Jock Sampson. And the crowd was hot during this match, wasn't it, John? Oh, my gosh. This was like, yeah, this was a fever pitch. This was such a fun match. And the reason uh, Bulk stopped him in a locker was because he got himself match a matching singlet that says bulk. I saw that. And bulk just, yeah, he just lost it. He got so upset. And the sad thing is, is he was so excited to show bulk and you know, how he always is. He's, he's always excited just to be around them and their tag team champions. Like, look what I got, man. I think you're going to love this. And bulk's eyes were bulging. And he's like, yeah, oh, no, no, I believe me. I had to sit down too. when I saw this, cause it's so great. And he just took him by the back of the neck and stuffed him in the locker and closed him in there. And he went out to wrestle the match on his own. And when Xander came out, your son was going nuts because the camera was just perfectly on it. And Sylvan went ballistic because you saw him all over the IWC network for only nine ninety nine a month. Um, yeah, so you knew something was going to happen just from Sylvan's uh, reaction. Nice. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, Sylvan and his buddy had a great night, and I'm going to touch on a few things later. Yeah, but yeah you're absolutely right. The whole crowd... Yeah, yeah. The, the whole crowd popped hugely when uh, when, when he um, – what's his name? Xander. You just said his name. Xander, thank you, yes. When Xander came out. Uh, I can never remember that little guy's name. Uh, Bulk had been going alone for a while and had been doing okay until usual shenanigans. Because um, you basically had a four-on-one or maybe four five on one situ situation there with all the guys on the outside. Um, but once, once Xander came out, the crowd had a huge reaction. Good double team moves, man. I just missed this so much about pro wrestling. It was on the pre-show. It was in this match. Good tag team wrestling guys working together. Um, you had bulk lifting Xander over his head and throwing them into people. 
Um, and it makes sense for that team. You know, you have a smaller guy who can fly and you have a much bigger guy. So they did some nice double team moves. Uh, in the end, they did like a Midnight Express. Fan, yes. I think. Yeah, Bulk hit a power bomb, which is not part of the Midnight Express finish, but it was when Stan Lane would get on the top rope and Bobby Eaton would send him flying off the top rope. That's what Bulk did to Xander. Xander was on the top rope. Bulk, you know, did like the body slam off the top rope, but instead of body slamming him, sent him flying into like a, a frog splash, and that's how they got the win, defended the titles. I was mad at Bulk. I was mad at Bulk for locking his partner in a locker. I'm like, this guy's just being mean, and there's no need for it. After the match... Well, even during the match, Bulk started to, like, take the top part of his single off, and Xander followed suit. Then when they won, he high-fived him with the belts. The announcer announced the winners are Bulk and Bulk. Bulk took the microphone, said the winners are steak and eggs. They tapped belts. I think he had to put him, like, not through an initiation phase, but he, he needed his partner to prove himself before he was going to accept him. And I guess that's okay. So you got to earn respect. Kind of like Sergeant Slaughter putting Greg Gagne through the boot camp. You know, this is box boot yeah. camp for Xander. Yeah, I mean, you know, he'd been harpooned. He'd been left for dead. He trusted people with his life in the Cobra Corps. Right. He wasn't just going to accept Greg Gagne. No, you got to prove yourself. So I'm going to throw you under the... How many regulators are there? Can you name all the regulators? <sighs> so let's see. There's a cop. There's a judge. Do you, want me, uh, do you want me to name them for you to help? I don't know those. Obviously, LaRusso and um, Jock Sampson. And as much as the sheriff guy yelled at my kids and me all night, I know his first name, but I still don't. Murphy. Murphy. Okay, easy enough. And then the, the judge is Lawless. Oh, I knew that. Yeah, okay. So yeah. you said during your, your ramble there, it was possibly 5 on one at one point. Who was the fifth person out there with No, them? I guess you're right. It, it was four. It was four on one. Okay. It All was right. four on one. And you had, like, guys in the ring creating a distraction, and, and I think maybe Lawless hit him in the throat with something, or it might have been Murphy, and that's the what things no. kind of... Wow, really... Yeah, it might have been with the gal. You're right. You're right. Um, yeah, and that's when things turned around, but... There was one point where they did a double suplex, which was nice to see. And then they went for another double suplex and bulk suplex them. Um, like, sent them flying across the ring. There's some some big hitting moves in this match and throughout the card. Uh, it was a gavel. And um, March 14th, you, uh, you definitely need to sit down and talk to each one of these guys because your recollection today of names is... Actually, no, it's not today. It's it's in life. Uh, you know, we've had we have had yeah. a thirty plus year friendship, and you can't remember shit. So let's go uh, ahead to um, go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say like both Nancy has been around a few years, so I've got his name. It's just it's the new guys. I'll get them. I'll get them. Anyway, moving on. Vegas we is... have uh, the Lebanon Don. Right, I remember that the Lebanon Don. He interrupted uh, Jimmy Vegas. Jimmy Vegas was supposed to have a moment in the ring where right. he was going to talk to the fans. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I just took a drink of coffee now. Good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh, oh. oh, okay. Uh, the Lebanon Don comes in and says he's already beaten Jimmy Vegas, so he doesn't want to match with him, but he's offered him five thousand dollars for a street fight. Um. Vegas comes out. Some guys come out of the back. I'm sure you can name every single one of the guys that came out of the back, Mark. So let's talk about them. Um, let's talk about them. One, go ahead, go ahead. one was a sexy fireman. The Board of Education was out there. And then Chase Gold came out. So, yeah. So you could name all of them. Um, the sexy fireman stayed out of it for a while. Then when he saw Bulk was cleaning house, he was like, nope, I'm leaving. And he went back to the to the locker room. Vegas just cleaned everybody's clock. He's a huge dude, and and three of those little guys were no match for him. Not at all. Not at all. And you thought maybe the fireman was gonna was gonna turn, but he just just lingered around, and then boom, see you later, like you said. And Vegas grabs the mic and says, "You know what? Screw it. I'll make this announcement later on tonight." Yep. So I guess we'll hear from him later. Then we get a 
strange yet intriguing R.C. Dupree promo. Uh, Snowball fights a little kissy kissy with his uh, posse entourage, whatever you want to call them. John, what do you think of this R.C. that's still suspended? Well, he he says he's been a, a follower all of his life, which from what little we know of him in the IWC, that is the case. He was uh, with uh, Jackson Argos. You know, uh, he was with uh, Jock Sampson. He was kind of the third man in a three-man faction. So he says he's not going to be a follower anymore. He's going to be a leader, and he's going to be the athlete that we all deserve. So I'm excited to see what this uh what this athlete is that we all deserve I, I think it's a great promo i think it's a lot of fun i like the whole uh gimmick i guess if you will and he has made this transition flawlessly from who he was before to who he is now still kind of the same but different just you know in, in wrestling you see characters taken to a different level not always necessarily better or higher just a different level level um he's taken this to a different level. It's sort of like the next chapter in this character's life. I like it. A little bit eccentric, right? Yeah, a little eccentric. Yeah, that's a good word to, to, to use in this situation. Well, that's his gimmick, but all right. Uh, next matchup is Spencer Slade, and he's going to take on John McChesney, and McChesney comes out with Dime Piece, the Man Dime, and Nightstrom. And this is the first time I get to see the dime piece tonight. Holy moly, holy moly, holy moly! She usually has, you know, tights on or something, and makes and she looks amazing. She's got this skimpy little black skirt dress thing on. I, you're gorgeous. You you really are. Uh, I know you listen to the podcast. You really are. I'm not being super. Other than me. No, you're not gorgeous at all. Um, the, the dime piece, uh, I I don't want your number or anything. We, we can chat, but uh, I'm not going to hit on you like that. But uh, you're just a, you're a beautiful woman. Uh, you can, you know how to work your ass sets. She had a tough time uh, once or twice getting in out of the ring. I was reminded of an episode of All in the Family in which oh. Gloria wears something similar and Archie is mad. He doesn't want his daughter wearing that. He says, uh, every time you sit down in one of them things, the mystery's over. And that's kind of how I felt about uh, what the dime piece was wearing. You know, Every time she got in the ring, the mystery was over. Damn it. See, uh, all right, let's stop right here before we talk about this match. Because right before we went on the air, I said this to John, that uh, I, I started watching the the network, and I, think, I figured, well, this is time for me to critique it. As soon as I started watching it, I got a knot in my stomach. I really did. Like, I don't miss many IWC events. This was, it, it really hurt me to call call you and say, hey, you know, can you find somebody to take my ticket over because my son's being a complete jackass. Um, it, it hurt. It hurt. It, was, it felt great watching it, but it, it just hurt that I wasn't there with my, uh, extended IWC family. Yeah, they missed you. Jenny asked about you, wondered where you were, and I figured I would just, you know, kind of let you tell the story. Um, yeah, but but folks missed you for sure. I, that's not, I wasn't, I wasn't saying it for, I didn't want glory, praise right. and glories. I'm just saying, like, I have a sickness. Like, it's what well, I told you that. You're stuck <laughs> in the head, yeah. You, you haven't missed one in years. I've missed one here and there. Um, so I guess maybe, not that I want to miss it because it's always a good time, but uh, it's a little easier for me. You need help. You need to talk to someone. <laughs> I do need help. All right, let's get back to the McChesney yeah. Slade match. And uh, why the hell the man that was eating gummy bears and uh, Hot Shot was eating or Slingshot or whatever the hell is Nightstrom was was eating? I don't know. They were just eating around ringside that annoyed the yeah. hell out of me. Oh, there you go. You're talking about it, right? It was something different. Shut up. It was yeah. Something to hold your attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mission accomplished. The match itself was fantastic, I thought. It, yeah. It was one of the better matches of the night for sure. It took a different turn than I thought. I thought we would see like a lot of technical wrestling. I loved what we saw to Spencer Slade. 
kept going for double legs and then ground and pound. Double legs, ground and pound. Um, I loved it. Beautiful drop kick by McChesney during the match where he dropped down. Slade went over when he came up. Timed beautifully. Um, just that, that nice, this is going to sound creepy, that nice arch in McChesney's, McChesney's back during that drop kick. Beautiful drop kick. Um, during this match, CJ, CJ Sensation, just for a moment reminded me of Jason Sensation, just because of the the, the the last name really is all. I don't know if they're related or not. You remember Jason Sensation yeah. used to do those incredible impressions, The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels. Yes. But Owen for Hart. some reason, when he did Owen Hart, yeah, it got under Owen's skin, and he came out and bitch slapped him and got him in the sharpshooter. Yeah. During this match, I was like, I wish somebody would come out and, and bitch slap CJ and get him in a sharpshooter. It, he he was infuriating with how easily he was distracted. More on CJ, because I have a note on CJ here in a bit. I really do. I really do. Okay. Sorry. No, that's all right. I, I just was hoping somebody would hurt him, and that's terrible. But <sighs> he was so easily manipulated. McChesney's telling him to check out this turnbuckle or something and so you've got the man dime and the don piece and the short shot all taking cheap shots on spencer slade um and during the the match i don't know what they if it was a punch or something but like it, it resonated throughout the arena and my son yells ref can you not hear that and i'm gonna oust the man dime he turns to my son and says no he's deaf just like your boy slade Unbelievable. You sent me that text actually last terrible. night. That's terrible. But the match goes down that everybody kind of just distracts CJ, as you were saying. And Nystrom gets to toss in some hairspray or spray paint or silly string or something that is compressed in a bottle. Squirts it in Spencer's face. Super kick to McChesney, from McChesney, and he gets to win. Yep. And, but the spray was like, I don't know. It it made a sound. It was like, Arrgh! was it an like air horn? Doing an impression of Diesel. What's that? Was it an air horn, man? Yeah, that's what it sounded like. You sprayed him in the eyes with an air horn. All right. Next we, oh my god. Next we have the high stakes title match. And John, this was my. By far, my my favorite match of the night. It, it really was. Holy hell! The blood, guts, glory, and uh, one of my all-time favorite wrestlers, Shane Douglas, was in this. I, I have nothing else to say. Yeah. It was just amazing. Hooven, you are the MF and man. This is God. It was a crime scene. It really was. I have never seen that much blood in a match. Uh, I don't hesitate to say that. I told you it kind of reminded me of WrestleMania 13, Bret Hart and Steve Austin, where Austin was just like, you know, like there was a, a faucet was turned on, you know, they're just blood spritzing everywhere. This was worse than that. I mean, Hooven was covered. And it was a chair shot for anyone who didn't see it, anyone was wondering. Earlier, Hooven threw a chair at Mambo Italiano, and Mambo kind of got his hands up. Mambo returned the favor. Hooven didn't put his, hand, his hands up. The sort of the rim of the chair connected to his head. Um, I know it's entertainment, and again, we never want to be disrespectful. We never want to know the ins and outs. We love to keep guessing. I don't know what in the world happened here, if this was by design or not by design. It it's the most blood I've ever seen. It is the most blood I have ever seen in a wrestling match. John, I actually, you can, you can go and watch it on the IWC network for only $9.99 a month. Uh, once it hits, you can see it literally squirting out. Like, Kayla Thompson and Brad Kaler and Megan Nelson, it, you know, it looked like the sexy fireman was out there squeezing Hooven's head trying to put a fire out. It was spraying everywhere. Yeah, it, it was sick. Um, quick shout out to Shane Douglas. Did a nice job as the referee. Um, just stayed out of the way and let the guys fight. Except until the end. 
He got in the way, which it doesn't make any sense because he, it, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. He got in the way, he got run into, and then uh, a glass bottle is smashed over yeah. Hoover's head as well. And the glass goes everywhere. Like, you saw shards uh, hit Lendl. I'm telling you, it is, again, the uh, two-to-one media, when they do things right, you see everything. Like, boom, it just blew the freak up. Uh, and Mambo gets the win. It was unbelievable. Yeah. There was a table spot earlier where Hooven had set up the table, and it was clearly a two-person job. And Shane Douglas goes, ah, I'm not going to help you. And I'm like, yes, thank you. I hate when the ref helps guys set up weapons. It's not your job. That's showing favoritism. But Shane told him, nope, not helping you. He set the table up, but it was ultimately to his own demise. That was another spot. That was like where we were sitting. That table blew, blew up when when Hooven hit it and was folded over on top of him. It was a bad night for Hooven, man. I didn't know Mambo had it in him. Mambo Italiano threw a beating in that match. He did. He really did. Uh, your new high stakes champion, and who, where's it going to go from here? But uh, Hooven gets some help out, and then all of a sudden, RC's music hit. I thought, wow, we're going to have back to back promos. No. He is in court time sports arena and ready to go, and he comes out and talks to. Mambo and says, hey, that's my title. I'm coming after it. Yep. He says he wants it back. But so, is, he's still suspended, though, right? Correct. Yeah, I haven't heard that he's been reinstated. I haven't heard that that's on for March 14th. Not to my knowledge, anyway. Me neither. I mean, me neither. I haven't either. Yeah. So yeah. we'll have to... Uh, let's, let's focus on the positive here. We have the very first... Italian-born champion in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania since Bruno San Martino. That's pretty special. That is pretty special. With you being Italian and me being half Italian, yep. we're all in. Yep. So yep. hopefully Marco goes all out for us and doubles down, and uh, we'll see. I mean, it, there's so many uh, possibilities coming for March 14th. Shout out to everybody and to myself. Uh, March 14th, John, do you know what happens the day after that? Uh, March 15th is the day after that. Yes, I know. Mark turns 43, Can't Crush his listeners. No, it's the eyes of March. It's, uh, it's the oh. eyes of March. It is, yes, clearly it's my birthday, but it's the eyes of March. But, uh, so that's, we should have a rip roar in time. We, we really should, uh, especially with some of the stuff going to happen that I see it's leaning that way. Uh, we should have a rip roar in time and maybe afterwards go out for a beverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm down. Okay. I'm down. I'm sure Soup is, too. All right, uh, so we have I, – I thought this is going to be where the intermission comes in. I really did. They have a hell of a lot to right. clean up, but they don't. They clean up quickly. You know, congratulations to uh, the security group and everything for IWC. They did a great job. They really did. They even sprayed. They came out with bleach and sprayed the mat tonight, which is the first time I've actually seen it in person or not in person that they sprayed where Hooven's blood was gushing. Yeah. And this um, is, go ahead. So yeah, they went. Go ahead. Go ahead. And this uh, they is, went right to, to Jackson Jackson Argos versus Jeff Cobb. Yeah. And this is where I get mad at 2 to 1 media. Uh, and I just found out I shouldn't be mad at 2 to 1 media. And John will touch on that. So Cobb and Argos, and it goes wonky for a little bit, and then bam. As Argos has uh, Cobb in the, in the neck ringer, boom, it is gone until after intermission, and I am a livid. Sending text to John saying how much this is bullshit, this is stupid, da 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 da, da. But John saved 2-1 to one media because it wasn't their fault. Yeah, um, Justin posted something about um, the building losing internet service, uh, which is why viewers temporarily lost the feed. That sucks, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that uh, you went through that, Mark. Um, it was a good match, start to finish. One thing I want to point out, because it, it is the details, when Jackson Argos locked up with Jeff Cobb, Cobb's obviously a much bigger guy 
Um, you've seen matches where the lockup goes back and forth. So if someone's against the ropes, then they switch and they switch and they switch on down. Maybe because I've only ever seen that sort of thing on TV, they're focused on the upper body. And because I was there live, I could see uh, Argos's entire body. He would switch his hips to gain the advantage on the lockup. That's an important detail because he doesn't have the power to just move Jeff Cobb around. So he'd switch his hips to reverse the lockup. Just a nice detail by a seasoned pro. Argos is amazing no matter what he does, whether he's flying off the ropes and doing something wicked or whether he's just freaking locking up with the guy. He's incredible. He's a terrific wrestler. We finished the match. I, I have no clue. I, I'll uh, come well, back yes, at halftime. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, there were, there were U.S. and Canadian flags in the crowd. This felt... Uh, this felt dangerous almost. This felt old school. Um, thankfully, they were sitting across the uh, gymnasium from each other, but there was an American flag with, with the usual suspects. Uh, and there was a Canadian flag over by us. Um, I mentioned, you know, the switch with the, uh, the lockup and using his hips. There was a nice exchange of holds. Um, outside the ring, Jeff Cobb went for maybe a power slam him on the floor or he went to ram Argos into the post Argos you know sneaks up behind him and rams Cobb into the ring post so he got the upper hand there uh for a little while um but not for very long not for very long Cobb was just too big of a guy um he had Argos down went for a, a standing moonsault at one point just too much showboating took too much time missed it um and I think that's maybe where Argo set him up for like almost like the octopus hold, but on the mat, not standing up. He had his leg wrapped around his head. Um, that's where Mark and viewers lost um, lost the stream, unfortunately. Um, Cobb hit a suplex, just a vertical suplex from one corner, and sent him flying into the other corner, which would have been crazy impressive. Uh, had Bulk Nasty not done it to two guys at the same time earlier in the match. Still very impressive. Cobb could only wrestle his opponent. opponent. Uh, his opponent was Jackson Argos. Threw him across the ring. Um, in the end, you have, trying to describe this move here, sort of like a, a, a spinning power slam, where he's kind of for a power slam, but instead of like falling forward, he kind of falls the other way, like towards his feet. Um, and that was enough for, for Cobb to get the win. So then we come back from um, intermission as we're wow, uh, just looking at the time. We'll have to pick, pick up the second half of the segment, John, uh, a little bit quicker. Um, we have Patch, Phoenix, Young, and Jameson fighting for the Super Indy title. And it was a great match until uh, Angelica, Corey, whatever the hell we're calling him, comes out. Yeah, and very quick, I'm so sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. During intermission, um, Cobb did not charge my son or his friend for a picture, which is very cool. I asked him if he would please tell Britt we still love her and miss her in Pittsburgh. He said he absolutely would. Um, or Britt, if you're listening, we love you and miss you in Pittsburgh. Uh, this was unbelievable, and I do have to share this. Uh, Shane Douglas's autographs, pictures um, were very, very inexpensive for a star of that caliber. My son and his friend blew all their money in about five minutes and had nothing left and asked him what a picture cost us. Um, he told them they were starting to walk away. I'll never know who this person was. Somebody reached into his wallet and gave the kids what they needed to get a picture with Shane Douglas. Because I asked, where'd you get the money for this? And they said some guy just gave him the money for it. I said, where, where is this person? They looked, they couldn't find him. So that, that, uh, unbelievably kind gesture by a total stranger to give my son and his friend money to get their picture taken with Shane Douglas. Just thank you. I don't even know what else to say. There are still plenty of good people in the world. Uh, sir, you're a class act. Thanks for uh, making my kids night. Thanks for making his friends night. That's uh, awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's yeah. Yeah, good that job. Good. yeah. Um, 
Fatal Four Way. Yeah, this match I thought stole the show. Um, yeah, Sean Phoenix. He's got both nipples pierced, which is freaky. Um, he's a good friend of the show. He gets. Uh, he gets uh, distracted um, by Angelic. They start a fight on the apron and then fight into the back. Um, one spot I really enjoyed, and this was a proud dad moment, um, Anthony Young did like a coffin drop um, where he falls backwards off the top rope, um, but finished it with a diamond cutter. And that's when my son jumped up, put his hands in the air, and yelled, bang! So that was a proud dad moment for me. So uh, DDP will be in Meadville, uh, Night of Superstars, so maybe you could go banging up there, huh? Yeah, maybe we'll go banging up there. Yeah, Patrick Tane's uh, double knee power bomb. It, you know, threw him up in the air, power bombed him onto his knees. One, two, three. I think he did that to Anthony Young, if I'm not mistaken. Bacon. Correct. Yeah. So, also, all of a sudden, boom! On the jumbotron, Addy comes on and says, "Hey." Uh, Summing it up, hey, I got this reset button. You better watch your ass. Uh, I'm coming for every champion. I'm 900 miles away in Maine. I, was is Maine really 900 miles away from Elizabeth? Do we know? I don't this? think so. I I don't think so, think so. No. You know, if you well, said, well, I don't know. If you would have said maybe like New Brunswick or uh, what's the one up in Canada? Damn it, I don't know. This is where I where my falters come out. What's in Canada that's new? Newfoundland, not Newfoundland. What, help me out, John. Yeah. Uh, Nova Scotia. Yeah, maybe uh, that. Yeah, maybe maybe there's no new in it at all. Okay. So Nova well, Scotia. Nova is probably a derivative of new in some Latin language. Okay, so that if he would have said Nova Scotia, I would have bought it. But Maine is not where you're at. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, New York is like 300 miles from where we are. Is Maine another 600 miles? I don't know. I don't. We'll have to get somebody on that. We really will. Yeah. Uh, but he yeah. does. He does say just because I'm not here doesn't mean they're not here. And lights pop back on in Otis Corbin and Remy laying a beat down. Yeah, they did. Uh, brilliant promo. Oh my God, brilliant promo. Promo that came from someplace deep within him. Um, it may be a true story. I don't know. We've touched on this before. If you just dabble a little bit of realism. Uh, you could tell some great stories. Brilliant promo. I can't say it enough. I'm engaged, and I'm curious to see where this goes. And Johnny Patch didn't listen to this week's Can't Crush Your Spotlight because he looked surprised that the culmination was there. Remy told us on the spotlight that he's coming. So that's yeah. on Johnny Patch. That really is. That's on him for not listening to us. See? You listen to us. Things happen when we say stuff. How many times have we said, here's what WWE needs to do, Mark? And then we turn on Raw and what happens, what we said. That's from you, Patch. Yeah, that's on you, Patch. Uh, Remy even says it. We will be there. Watch out. Uh, well, what, Patch, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're getting comfortable. You're getting too comfortable. Yep. So... Uh, next match is Big Call, <laughs> Big Collier, Big Time Bill Collier against Andrew Paris. And <clears throat> once again, this whole second half, the the video is wonky, uh, wonky, wonky, wonky. There was one point in this match that it actually rewound, and I watched five minutes over again. And uh, there's two things I want to bring up, and I'll let you cover this match. One. CJ was cringeworthy in this match. Any hit, he felt it. He <laughs> fell down. He he uh, he oversold. Uh, you know, a mouse running through the ring. It was it was rough. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's too much. Second, second, uh, one of our new friends of Can Crushers. Megan Nelson didn't pay attention to this match at all. She was, because that was the angle, and the angle that they were showing, her and her lady friends 
were putting on makeup, they were texting each other, playing slap ass and everything. They did not pay Dude, attention. I to swear to you, I was going to say that. I noticed it last night. I'm like, oh, there, there she is. Uh, we ought to give her a shout out. You know, maybe I'll talk to her at some point and we'll give her a mention. And then I thought, no, here's where we need to mention her. Like, I, I've never seen anyone care less about a match. She did not care about this match at all. They literally, because they did this, they did the camera from her side, you know, the opposite side of her to show it her and her friends. I don't know what the hell they were doing, but they weren't paying attention to anything with calling her in Palace. <laughs> you can get kicked out for that. Um, I talked to my brother, Tony, and this sucks. He went to a Madison Square Garden card years ago that I, that I didn't get to go to. Um, and he said this woman was like walking up and down the aisles and getting guys to whistle at her and look at her. Security came right down and uh, took her out because she was distracting from the matches. So Megan's lucky she got to stay. Right, well, that, she, she's on warning now. She's on warning. Yeah. Jenny's going to yep. toss her ass out. Uh, what, um, what happened in the match? Because it went wonky. Well, again, every match told a unique story, which is what made this card so good top to bottom. So you had Andrew Palace and big time Bill Collier sort of having a little beef with Palace insisting that Collier um, is maybe turning heel, maybe joining a faction. The course of the match itself, Collier just tossed him around him around you know a waist lock takedown he made it personal he waist locked him picked him up and boom face slammed him into the mat um palace kind of played up the little guy trying to beat up the big guy gets hip tossed um but hip tossed with with aggression not just for the sake of taking somebody down has a little bit of offense where he hits a head scissors followed by a drop kick gets up boom big boot to the face big time just flattens him again Big time, uh, hit him with a fall away slam from one side of the ring. He hit so hard, Palace rolled out of the ring and rolled about halfway back to the dressing room. Unbelievable. Another proud dad moment. I said, Who invented that move? Sullivan said, Razor Ramon. I shed a tear. Um, he really he put a beat down on Palace. Palace really tried to hold his own. Collier just uh, too much man, and he came determined. Uh, to prove a point. He pulled him out of the corner into a powerbomb. It was a situation where Palace was holding onto the corner, like the bottom rope, you know, and Collier had him by the feet. And you've always seen the, the one wrestler pulls the other wrestler out by his feet, and the wrestler takes a, the, who was holding onto the corner takes a bump on the mat. He pulled him up and caught him in a powerbomb. I, I mean, the strength, the agility that takes, um, these guys put on a great match. And in the end, um, it was kind of a punch to the face that knocked Palace out for uh, for the win. And then I did see, this is where the feed came back for a minute. It literally, I saw Collier, Slade, and Palace pointing at Team Big League on the outside, so nobody joined. They were trying to get Big League or Palace to join, or what happened there? Correct. They were trying to get Collier to join. They offered him a, a T-shirt. It was um, reminded me of the NWO uh, recruiting DDP. He went along with it, hugged, had the shirt, um, and then he wrapped the shirt around his fist and punched uh, John McChesney in the face, knocked him out. Of course, the rest of team big, uh, yeah, the rest of team big league jumps on him. Um, they're beating him down when. Slade makes the save. Um, still too many guys for those two to handle. Uh, Palace is leaving. Fans are booing Palace, telling him to get in the ring. Uh, he gives it some thought. Then he charges the ring uh, and helps clear the ring. Um, so the good guys are left in the ring while the bad guys hightail, hightail it out of there. I still, I told the kids last night, I was wrong last night, but I'm still ho I'm holding myself to this. Uh, Palace will join Team Big League. I was just going to say that you, because you said for months now that he used to be a big league member. Here he was an STD, as it was corrected. Right. 
But uh, I yeah, Justin. Thanks, Justin. He 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 set the record straight. Yeah, I have one or two that I want to say could possibly join big league. Um, one being Palace in this whole scheme of what they're doing right now. He's just gonna he's just gonna cave and go with the bad guys. Or McChesney reaches deep into his pocket and brings out one of his close friends from old school team big league because he wasn't there last night but he might have been watching the feed jimmy nuts oh, oh wow that's exciting stuff so all right moving on we have a queen i'm versus... telling you go ahead yeah go ahead no, no, I'm, all i was going to say was it, it's so much fun it's such a good promotion it keeps you guessing it keeps you engaged um you know the big guys could uh could learn a thing or two from these guys. Queen versus Queen match. We have Katie Arquette against Queen Aminata. And this is one of the reasons why I was upset that uh, my goal was to get to say hi to royalty. Uh, I, I really wanted yeah. to see Queen Aminata. Was she out during halftime or intermission? You know what I mean. Was she out and about? Yes. Ah, yes. See, that right there, that's why the knot was in my stomach. That's why. Yeah. I, I, she, man, again. Just, Dare I say, the knot would have been in your stomach had you met her in person. Dude, yeah. dude I'm telling you. She is uh, something to behold. Royalty. Royalty. She's uh, royalty. I'm yep. upset that she comes out with LeBar. Uh, I wanted to just yeah, do it, but, yeah. you know, we didn't need him. He really doesn't do anything for her that night. Uh, I'm glad, though, I'm going to spoil it. I'm glad she gets the win. I really am, because I could see uh, I could see an angle coming real quick, and then uh, I'm excited. I'm not spoiling this one, but I'm excited to where Aminata is going to go. She doesn't get the win without him, though. I know you said she doesn't do anything for him. I agree. She doesn't do much for him. Or he doesn't do much for her, excuse me. But right. Labar distraction. distraction. Yeah. Was a distraction. But she didn't need uh, it. And that helps. I yeah. Yeah. Katie hit a really nice German suplex, by the way, during the course of the match. I made a note of that. Uh snapped it. Very nice looking German by uh the real real queen, Katie Arquette. Oh, so you're on Katie. It's good. This is a feud between us then? Yeah, yeah. All right, good. I've been thinking about, you know, dabbling back into television and theater again. So I looked to Katie. She's the queen of the silver screen. I look to her for inspiration and motivation. Well, I always want to be better than the silver screen. So I like royalty and I like royalties uh, because it brings oh. you money. So, yeah, uh, I'm all about it. Okay, it's, it's on. All right. Aminata thing. did a real heelish thing, by the way. She took her coat. She took the fur coat. I did. I put did it on see. and then threw it on the ground. Yeah. That her uncle gave her. Yep. So. Uh, anyway. No, it's uncle. Yeah, it's, you're right. You're right. Okay. It's uncle. Um, so I would expect Aminata to be back, right? She would be maybe number uh, one contender now to Raylan. Yeah. Although, I don't know. He manages her too, right? Mm. Where does he go? Does he stay... Uh, Right, funky, flashy with uh, one of our best girlfriends of the show, Ray Lynn, or does he care about the royalty like me? We don't know. Well, we, we have to tune in and see. We will. Uh, next show, March 14th. Not that it's being announced or anything, but we'll have to find out. Now we get to the main event. Uh, Brian Pullman Jr. against Jack Pollock? Pollock? Jack, which First Jack? First of all, it's Pollock. Oh, okay. Uh, for the IWC Heavyweight Championship. And again, a little bit wonky. But John, I'll say it. This this wasn't my favorite match. I love Jack. This wasn't my favorite match. Wasn't my favorite. favorite. It was good. First of all, the intros were incredible. Um, hats off to the ring announcer. Holy moly. You um, wait a minute. Stop. You can't just say the ring announcer. No, you just can't say the ring announcer. The guy. Is there more than one. All right. 
No, no, no. The guy does our intro. You can't just throw him aside like he's trash. It's Mr. freaking Nick Wendell. You can't just say, the ring announcer. He did our intro for this year. But at least I mentioned it. You were going to just skim right over it. The intros were amazing. Okay. All right. Amazing intros. Good job, Nick. I like this match. Uh, there was good chain wrestling in the beginning. Really, really stiff shots, man. Pillman laid in the chops. He laid in the kicks to Pollock's back, his chest. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was a fine match. Um, it was nice to see Pillman Jr. do that move Pillman Senior used to do. To my knowledge, he was the first person to do it. Sort of the springboard. Uh, off the ropes uh, into a clothesline. Uh, it was cool to see that move again. The whole card was really stacked. It, it was hard to go on the last. Right. Um, especially with not a major buildup to it and not a major story behind it. I still thought it was good. I still thought it was very good. Yeah. But not uh, my favorite. I agree with you. It wasn't my favorite match of the night. My favorite was the Fatal 4 way. But... Jack keeps the title, and then what happens after... Sets up March 14, and it, what happens after, right. again, damn, there's blood all over the place again. Yeah. Um, very quickly, I think this was another situation where a basic move won. I think Pollock just hit like a basement drop kick. Yeah. And I'm well, okay with that. I am perfectly okay with it. You get kicked in the chin, chances are you're going out. Well, it's his version of... Um, a running wizard, the Kinshe that, you know, Shinsuke does, or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, it, it's it's Shaq's version of that. Right. Okay. Right. So Vegas comes out, he's going to make his announcement. But he is flanked by our boy, Super Hentai, which we need to talk to again real quick. We need to reach out to yeah. him. Uh, Dean Radford, Buck Nasty. And Jimmy's daughter, well, he grabs a mic and he's like, you know, I'm coming out here. To, and you're putting two and two together. Holy shit, he's going to retire. You, you understand, right. boom, right off the bat. And he's like, two friends couldn't be here, though, because Plummer fired them. And good that those two friends weren't there. Those yes. Are, those are my non-two uh, friends of Jimmy seven. Vegas. Yep. So I, I didn't care about those two friends. So thank you, Justin Plummer. Talks about injuries, talking about losing memories, and I'm on board. I, I completely understand the losing memories thing. But we get to, you know, he wants to pass the torch to Pollock. Pollock says, I'd like one more match. Jimmy says, I can't. All right, well, we're going to put your face mask on. Go from there. Uh, he's So he puts his face mask on. You know, he tells him, put it on and exit the way you came in, which was sort of the point of this speech earlier. You want to go out on your terms. So he's going to exit the way he comes in. So it's a nice, you know, figurative thing, uh, metaphor, as we writers call it. Um, so he puts the mask on and they go to hug and he headbutts Pollock. I, the crowd was stunned. Stunned. They were speechless. It was the old Mark Henry, I'm coming out to retire, retire, you know, storyline throw back in. And then, nope, I'm not going to, I'm going to beat your ass. Yep. I loved it. Bloodied him. Bloodied him. Refs came out. Everybody came out. And then this is where I felt bad for wishing ill on CJ because he <laughs> got his ill here. He really did. Big time. Um. Yeah, he cleaned house. Vegas cleaned house. He beat up everybody. There were some fans next to us who were, like, genuinely scared of what was going on. Um, He treated, I hate to say this, but he treated Plummer like a bitch. I mean, he grabbed him by the face, he did. threw him down, hit his head off the turnbuckle, like, grabbed him by the jacket or the tie and screamed in his face, and then just didn't smack him in the face. Smacked him upside the head. Yeah. 
I would have, I would have liked to. Now I, I speak no ill will over plumbers or anything, but just one more dig from Vegas is he was walking out to paintbrush him with his foot. Just one more time, just to tell plumber, suck it, right? Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. So Vegas says, hey, title versus retirement match. So if he wins the March, title, yep, he stays March around. 15. Yep, wins the belt, he gets to stay. He loses, he's done. Uh, if that doesn't bring you to IWC 18, 19, what the hell are we calling 19. this? 19. 19. 19. I, I don't, yeah, that usually comes after 18, doesn't it? God. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what. Um, I'll give you mine real quick. All in all, great card. I, I, I liked it. I really did. I got more upset about technical issues than the wrestling. Um, this is my first time, as I said, watching a live live event from IWC. Um, early on, John, I was texting you, man, the, the camera looks great. I love just the way they're, they're really on top of their shit, two-to-one media, filming, recording, broadcasting, however we want to say it, the event, because it looks great. It's seamless. It's things out of their uh, out of their hands that pissed me off, so I won't throw them under the bus. Yeah, yeah. I, I if you're asking me for a rating, I'm going to give it six beers without even thinking about it. This is one of the best cards, um, as far as like, you know, sort of the the technical aspect of being live. If you remember, our buddy Jack came with us to one of their events a long, long time ago, uh, six or seven years ago. And, you know, he was never, he was a bit of a wrestling fan when we were kids, not a huge fan. Um, and he said, like, some of the little things were missing. There's too much dead air. You know, they, they could tighten up here or there. Sort of the technical things. Mark, there wasn't a moment of dead air, if you will, last night. They, they did not let you stop to think for a second before they were on to the next thing, whether it was another match, promo, whatever. Um, it was a good tight show it didn't run too long this was about as good as it gets this is certainly one of the best i've ever attended see and i think that's where again that not in my stomach not being there it was nice not having to drive three hours home once it was over boom turned it off i was in bed by the time you were home from elizabeth last night that was nice right. not gonna lie about it uh missing the atmosphere it, it was, I said it was a great card. I can give it a five. One, because I'm not holding two to one to the issues, but there was issues on my end. I can't judge it from being there. Um, I didn't get the crowd. So that kind of, you know, Ethan and Kelly weren't screaming in my face or smelling or anything like that. So I just, <laughs> I had, I had right. some issues that I missed out on. So, yeah. Good to great card. I have to give it. I can't give it the full effect because I had some issues, and you know, partially because they were Ethan's fault. Right. So this one's on Ethan. This is clearly on Ethan. Yes. No. 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 We love you, buddy. Get uh, get your stuff straight, Ethan. He'll be back. He'll be back in uh. Anybody that wants to send them a note, you can send them a note at cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Give him some hell about uh, his grades. I'll make sure I pass those along to him so uh, he gets down in the dumps a little bit more because that's the kind of asshole that I am right now. And it's his own doing. It really is. I love the kid. Uh, he calls me Uncle John. I love that kid. This is of his own doing. This is just pure laziness. And, you know, that's not what we expect from him. And that's why I keep throwing them out there. That really is. If it was something else, uh, but this is just pure laziness. So, all right, we, we've definitely got longer than, than I thought. March 14th right. is IWC 19 in Elizabeth. And anybody that wants to uh, join us for some drinks afterwards somewhere, we'll let you know where. Um, and I also have... The next time we do our IWC recap, it'll be me, you, and Soup. I have a bombshell to announce. So March, oh, wow. 5th, March 15th, Drunken Mark is going to announce a major bombshell 
with IWC and Can Crushers. Uh, guys, he's not even going to tell me. I promise you. As much as I'm itching to know, he will not tell me one second before he tells all of you. All right, buddy. We will see you uh, soon. I'm glad we don't have homework this week, by the way. Yeah, no homework this week. Relax, guys. Hey, this is Jack Pollock, the IWC Hardcore Icon. You're listening to Can Crushers Podcast. If I like it, you should too. Okay, what's the big announcement? I'm not telling you either. You, you are going to tell me if I have to go down to Bob's Beverage right now and Look, buy you a case of beer. I can't. I, yes, you can. I, legal. I will get you drunk and take advantage of you. <laughs> what? <to tell> me. <laughs> what? I don't know which way you're taking advantage of me. I don't know what you mean Getting by that. Getting information from you. Oh. What are you thinking? I don't know. I, don't, I was uh, too many beers right now. Uh, legal <laughs> obligations. I'm, I'm going to wait until... The March 14th recap of IWC, which will be, first of all, that podcast is going to be on my birthday on March 15th. So it could be one of those complete shit show podcasts where if you don't drink, you're not allowed on the podcast. Listen, I I texted, well, you and John were talking and everything. I texted my lawyer, and you can legally, you know, Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, my lawyer. Right. I text them, and they said, you can legally do that. What? Tell them. Tell tell us what the big I, deal I, is. I, I can't. I uh, I have, I, I keep a word with probably the plumbers that will we'll wait on on that. It's it's big. Maybe the plumbers have to make sure their shit's in the line first. Maybe it's on our end, and I'm holding them up. Mm. It's going to be big. Two cases. Two cases. Well. We're getting there. We're getting... No, all right. We're long. We're extremely long. Uh, what do you have else that you want to bring up? Let's try to keep this under two hours as we're at 140-something right now. WrestleMania matches. We've seen nothing Nothing really surprising. Nothing... No. You know... It's going to be... I posted something. They're thinking about... And this is a topic that will take us over the two-hour mark. Well then, let's get let's not talk about WWE then. Let's skip <laughs> that, even though we just brought it up. We'll the wrestling up game week. pre-sale. Yes, the wrestling game pre-sale has officially uh, been announced. I put it up last night. Retrosoft Studios announced that the pre-sale for STEM or Steam and the Switch is available right now. Right. Because they have the the power to do that. For Xbox One and PlayStation 4, it's going to be closer to the time that it comes out. And the time that it comes out is July. And that is just because of the size of the platforms and everything like that. It's it's, it's nothing, nothing on retro stuff. Yeah, it's it's nothing that PlayStation or Xbox is holding them out for more money or no. anything like that. It's just the size of it. They're not even looking through some posts last night some people wanted them to put a uh like a, a teaser out like something you could just a demo a demo or yeah. something like that and they're like we literally can't with the size of those other platforms right so the wife and i were talking about it uh, on the way feeding the sun and everything and i'm to i have every i'm a child. I'm a 42-year-old child. I, I will continue to agree with that more and more. So I have every platform. Now it's, what platform do I want to get it on? I have Fire Pro Wrestling and the, those stupid-ass 2K ones on the PlayStation. Um, I have some old-school ones on the Xbox. So I might go and pre-order it on the Switch just because... That's a legit why I bought the Switch. I bought the Switch knowing that that was where it was going to come out first. See, you'll laugh at this. I'm in the same way, just a little bit older as far as Not much, a though. kid. Yeah. About five, five years. You just don't have the Xbox One. Yeah, I don't have the Xbox One, but my side is I like playing games more on the PS4. But for travel purposes and stuff like that, the PSP, having it on the PSP... This is this will be great for our trips and stuff and things like that. That's what I was thinking. Well, you said the PSP. You mean the Switch? Or yes, I'm sorry, the Switch. That's what. Now that as soon as you started saying this, I agree because 
Am I going to pre-order it for the Switch? No. You're not? I'm not going to pre-order it for the Switch. I'm waiting. My main thing is the PlayStation 4 because any trip that we're really going to need it on is going to be after it's out and available. So I can get it whenever for the Switch. I could get it by the time we go to WrestleCade. Oh, yeah. For the shit. Switch. So I want it on the Oh, on and it's going to be after Crockett Cut, Crockett Cup, too. Yep. So that's that's where I'm going with it. I'm going to have it on do two you th- want Do you want to buy it two times? It's under thirty bucks, Mike. I'm going to end up. I'm going to end up buying it. Yeah, because there's going to be the switch. You can play it on one, and Vinny can play it on yes, the other. Yes, I can give it to him, and he'll leave me alone while I'm playing it on the PlayStation. Um, Son of a bitch that makes so well, we're going to spend sixty dollars on a game, and that's that's just it. It's it's worth it. Mm-hmm. It's worth it for the price and everything, and the amount of wrestlers and the wrestlers and whatever else stuff that they haven't discussed. I mean, they've talked it's about DLCs it. in time, so. But, you know, when when we're doing these travels to North Carolina or Atlanta or... Guam. Or, <laughs> you know, we're talking about going to Hawaii for a pay-per-view. Oh, don't say that too loud. Somebody will be bailing um, downstairs pretty soon. It's not the dog. It, it just makes sense to have it on a platform that you can... Travel with. with you. Huh. Especially when you're... You know, my little one, five years old, loves wrestling. Period. Um... He kind of hates WWE crap a bit, but that's it's, of it's, you. But okay. it's always on TV. But AEW, he sits, he watches it. Yeah. Um, NWA. NWA, same thing. He he doesn't know about the bus coming up that he's going to be going on. But this would just be a perfect thing. Yeah. You know, for him, and then you know, like for I us. said, for me, maybe instead of sleeping all the way down to. Maybe you play. And I can I can stay up for a little bit. You know how much that would piss me off if you're playing Retromania and I'm driving. Well, maybe you'd let me drive then. You've heard my horror stories of letting people drive. Yeah, I, just... I know. Yeah, but then if we have that, I guess I could play that and not fall asleep either. Like I'm not narcoleptic or anything like that. I just I get antsy. No. Maybe it's only because the wife's driving sometimes, and now I'm whispering because she's right upstairs. But I'm not saying anything about that. No, because your wife's going to listen with you later and on. She and has she, guns, and she's going to throw you out the door and no, shoot you. She's going no, she's not even going to throw me out the door and shoot me. She's going to shoot me on the inside and then throw you out the door and then throw me out. The and door. then I'll pick you up in a garbage Thursday. Yep. Great. Um, wrestling coming up all over the place. It's all over our website, guys. Uh, you can find our website attached to any social media outlet, which is at CanCrusher69 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Uh, our email is CanCrusher69 at gmail.com. And it's time for our teaser. It, it's time. We're going to we're gonna say goodbye right after this. As we talked about, you're giving me a finger for Yes, one, one last thing before we throw the teaser in. Uh, Ring of Honor is starting a new show. I did hear that. It's uh, gonna be. They're gonna have couple. It's kind of like the AEW Dark, from what I'm gathering. Yeah. But it's gonna be again, you know, getting some talent developed, some breakout talent stuff like that. More news to come. Not a lot. They're just gonna be doing it. It's gonna be on YouTube. Oh, so next week you'll have all three of us pretty much in the opening segment like we did last week. Um, I believe John's gonna do AEW. Uh, and Chad and I will discuss, but uh, we're gonna we're not gonna do raw because we're gonna keep it to two hours. Raw is scrapped because we can by by doing the others by doing SmackDown, I think you can say you can make the comparison. okay, SmackDown average this over a two hour show and you can look at raw, okay, it's a three hour show. they're gonna be about the same thing. I'm gonna do with raw, I'm gonna do a uh, a cheater on it i will say that i will go and pull just actual in-ring wrestling time from raw but i have a way to do that to where i don't have to torture myself you don't have to watch it and watch the whole damn thing so i will do that on the side i am going to do which people are like it's still not the same i am going to do nwa and then ovw i know they're both only one hour shows but they're on YouTube. 
Yeah. So you could then just go and watch because they have promos, they have commercials on there, they have their ads, they have out of ring stuff. You know where I'm going. So just I'm going to do the YouTube aspect of it of what they have because they're both running roughly an hour, hour fifteen. And we can make just make the comparisons. Okay, right. raw hourly comparison. This much crap, which will be fifty nine minutes and forty five seconds, <laughs> probably. You know, we can make an hour comparison, whether it's a three-hour show or an hour show. Right. We're still going to be able to say, okay, this company's doing, I'm hoping X, Y, and Z. Be, this company's doing real good here and, you know. Failing here. Failing nicely here. It, it's going to, we're going to be able to get a good rating, a good, you know, level playing field, so to speak. Yeah. All right, so we're there. We're at the time. Uh, we brought up Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat. We brought up what other things that we kind of dusty hip? roads and bleeding. Yeah, blood. Uh, we we we've him hot around. We've thrown enough uh, teasers out that maybe you guys would have caught on that we're going to talk to somebody big back in the day, uh, old school that continues. To be sought after. Yeah. Now. Now. Well sought after for wrestling events, whether doing his stick, whether doing... Do you want to give full name, or do you just want to give them Jim Cornette's nickname, and they have to do some uh, searching? Well, some of, some people might not like Cornette, and I, I can understand that. Um, but if I say it's just the, just... World, the world's most dangerous ring announcer, he's written a book. Called Body Slams, Memoirs of a Wrestling Pitch Man. Right. That's good. That That's it? That's good. We don't want to have no name. No name. If you don't know who it is, search up all that stuff. And that's who we talked to on Wednesday. Just think of another, another clue where Michael Buffer is the big guy to, used to be the big guy to UFC and boxing. This is yeah. his equivalent times 10 to the wrestling world. WWF, AEW, no, WWF, AWA, WCW, and Ring of Honor, he has been in. Yes. All right, that's Do it. Do some search. Do some search. You'll hear it Wednesday. And guys, uh, spoiler, we've already talked to him. It's Great, amazing great interview. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we dive right in. We don't him haw around. What's the damn secret? I can't tell you. I can tell you one thing though. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a, a garbage trash can. can. A garbage can, a not garbage. a garbage. See, right. that's what you get. I I knew it this time, but you screwed me up. No, you just don't know it. Oh, I forgot.